Howdy, me Philip Bart here, and welcome, welcomen, howdy. So, as the description will show, what we're going to do is continue on from the hotel project, and this is a learning resource and kind of a mm, pseudo test system for people on my team. So, what it is what what it is we got so far? We have a regular roaming NPC that just kind of walks around and just you know does his thing got the hotel lobby and it's kind of empty and blank I've got a fake door here you look down there's a hallway here now I've got it open because I don't plan on doing any lighting this is just for functionality stuff and not for actual you know map building and that kind of stuff for you know interior lighting and that kind of stuff all reality I'd have a bunch of windows and things like that to get as much natural light as possible but not the porpoise of this video one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to open up these door frames this one and that one, so going into the hallway is an easier transition. And what we have is three different rooms. They're out of sequence right now, but this would be room number one. It's closest to the lobby. And cool. You go back into the hallway, come back over here, go in this doorway. This is room number two. And you can see there's a bad guy in here. And come here, wake up. Quit licking the wallpaper. There you go. And he will approach you whenever he sees you. And then there's room number three, which is just another room, just to show that there's different types of rooms available. So that's just a recap. And each of these door frames would actually have a door there just for, you know, looks wise. And they each go to a different style of room. In all actuality, there is just triggers in front of each door. And there's only three rooms. But they're set at random so you don't know which room you're going into whenever you open up the door. It could be room one, room two, or room three. There could be a bad guy in there, or it could be whatever, you know. So, moving on from there, we need to do a health system. As you can see, we have a health bar in the bottom right hand corner of the screen that came as part of the asset pack that I put together. And we're going to go from there and set up the health systems. Okay. And first thing make sure add the animation starter pack because that's going to become useful we're going to go to our characters folder animations we need to make sure that we create one in the um, the character folder called animations and then inside of the animations folder another one called death and we're going to go in here to the animation starter pack we're going to also we need to ensure that so that we can retarget this the animation starter pack comes with its own separate UE4 mannequin so if you open up that, you'll see that there's a UE4 mannequin and a mesh folder. You have to go into it and make sure you select humanoid rig and then hit save. Very important step there. And we can actually close that one back down. Go back into your regular mannequin. Come down to your character folder and mesh. Go into it and do the exact same thing. Select rig as humanoid rig and then hit save. You don't have to reposition anything, we're just using animations that are already set up and working. So now we can go into our animation starter pack, we're going to grab death 1, going to right click on it, and duplicate animation ad set and retarget, select UE4 mannequin skeleton, hit change to change the location where we're putting it, it's going to go in our, our character folder, animations, and death, then retarget. It should automatically carry you to that folder. If not, just go to it manually. Then we're going to go into the death underscore one, and we're going to create an animation from this. We're going to hit pause, grab this little red bar here, drag it all the way to the very end, so it's the end of the death animation. Go over to create asset, create animation, current pose, select the characters folder animations death and we're gonna call this dead so now we have this this is a dead pose and this works the best that I've seen so far so we're gonna do that we're gonna go ahead and do a save all now we can minimize the mannequin folder and go into our character blueprints player underscore base all right so we got our event tick and event begin play. Just need to make sure we've got those set up there. The startup stuff should already be in there, and there's a custom event that's run running this right here. 
that's fine. We don't need to mess with that for right now. I'm going to find an empty space to work with, and I'm going to start off with creating some variables. The first one is going to be is dead question mark. Okay, that's going to be an important one. We we need to to discover whether or not we're dead or not. So I'm going to create another one, which is a respawn trends form come over here and change it from a boolean to a transform hit compile save come back over here and change the z to 110 000, 000 is fine for right now for an intermediate default what we're going to need to do is go into the map go to the map blueprints open level blueprint and as you can see there's really nothing in there so what we're going to do is event begin play and you'll want to copy and paste this into every one of your maps so that this is a functional thing within your system so what we're going to do is cast to player underscore base which is our player character we need to get player character as our reference and we need to set our respawn transform and we need a location for that transform so there's a couple ways that we can actually get that transform information I'm going to compile and save but we need to actually get that location now if you notice there's already four network spawn locations but right now this character is in 00110 he's in the correct location where our normal spawn would go um, however we're gonna go ahead and make a spawn and if you remember inside the asset folder and mesh there is a player peg grab that throw it into your map and pick out a location you want for your spawn point I'm just gonna keep it simple and put it at negative 600 and 0 and this number will always be 110 because of the elevation that you're going to need I probably should have modified this so that it, it's actually in the correct location but whatever um, so we know that we want negative 600 and what we can do here is create a variable respawn location and this is going to be the default respawn location now we can hit compile and save. Now we can put that information in the location, which is going to be negative 600, 0, and 110. That's going to create our new transform for our, our location. We can compile and save. I'm going to go ahead and grab this respawn location, get it, plug it into there. So this is, as soon as we load into the map, is going to create a defawn a default a default spawn location so we always have that there so okay back to our character so we have our respawn transform and is dead we're gonna come up with a few more and I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the player stats category and now we see we have health which is replicated is dead and I'm not sure that it's gonna matter but I'm gonna go ahead and set that as replicated respawn transform does not need to be but in our player stats we need to add a couple more uh, variables the first one's going to be our min health it needs to be a float and needs to go into the category of player stats and it does not need to be replicated and another variable which is called max health which does not need to be replicated but let's put it in the category of player stats we're going to compile and save our maximum health needs to be set to 100 whereas our minimum health can stay at zero so now compile and save now what we're going to do is right click and create a custom event we're going to call this our health check. 
So when we call this this actual custom event into play, which we will, I'll, and I'm going to go ahead and compile and save, and I'm going to come up to event tick, and from event tick, we're going to run health check. Probably not necessary to run it there, but I'm going to do it there anyway. All right, because um, we're also going to create some other variables too, but this is going to be a system that is going to check the top and bottom health and make sure that we're not above 100 and we're not below 100. So what we need to do here is start getting some references and I want to get my health and what I want to do is I want to float I want to find out in this first one if my health is less than or equal to my minimum health. Now, we're checking to see if that's the situation. If it is the situation to where our health is equal to or less than our minimum health, and of course we're going to need a branch, then we need to create a couple variables here, or set up the variables. So if so, then we need to, for sure, set is dead to true. And click that box. So what we've done is we've checked to see if our health is zero or less than zero. Um, but what we also want to do is come off from this true and set our health and we're going to leave it at zero. You could if you want to connect minimum health into there but keeping it clean that's fine. We can leave it the way it is. So this is the first part of our health checks and balances system is to see if we're at or below zero if so we need to make sure we set it to zero and set is dead to true and we're gonna have another custom event we're gonna add down here called dead or death it's a death sequence so I'm just gonna create it and we'll come back to it so now we need to run death off of the end of this. This is our, our start to our death sequence. The next thing we need to do is we need to get a reference to our health. Now we can get it this way or we can get it from here. Now we're going to need another branch and we're going to come off from this and what I want to do is without stretching it out too far you know it's entirely up to you how you get that reference but I'm gonna actually now I'm gonna actually pull it from here so what I want to do is I want to get my health and now I want to ask float I want to see if my health is greater than my max health so this is gonna help us to clamp our value. There is a clamp node you could use, but this is just going to help us to clamp down on this and force it back to what it should be. So we need to set our health at that point so I can alternate left click drag in and set health. Off the faults we don't need to do anything so we just need to get a reference to our max health. So we're clamping it in here and saying if it's below zero, set it back to zero. If it's above 100, set it back to 100 so that we, we force ourselves to form that health. Okay. Now, death sequence. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, because we've already established that death is true at this point, we don't need to set up a, um, a branch and check to see if it's true here or anywhere else. So we have our health check, it's runoff event tick, and we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and open up the. Oh, God, what? Where did I put it? Animation root folder. Nope. Since we didn't create our own unarmed animation or anything else, we're going to go to our mannequin folder and animations and let's go ahead and open up our third person animation blueprint and we're going to start adding in the death sequence. 
Now, the only thing I've done in here is I've just reorganized. This is the normal default third-person animation blueprint. I just got rid of the comment blocks and I reorganized it so it looks a hell of a lot neater. So, first what we need to do is create a new variable called dead. Simple, right? And all we need to do here is, and I'm going to do it a little bit different. Um, I'm going to run this off of a branch. Actually, we don't really need to. Um, we do need to definitely, for sure, cast to player underscore base. And we're actually going to get the object reference from try get pawn owner. So you're going to want to drag it from here all the way over to there. So we're going to try to get the correct pawn owner. So this should not be a problem on replicating. Should not. So we want to get is dead and then I'll try it a couple different ways here but this way should work just fine and then we want to set that to say dead we are now dead because this is a variable that we're asking are we dead yes or no and if it's yes then we're on this condition so let's go ahead and compile and save let's go to the um, default which is the anim graph and make sure you click on default to get back to this view here and you see we've got death one and dead already so what I want to do is I want to drag off from the lip come down and add a state called death okay so with that death state I am going to double click on that I'm going to grab our death animation drag it in here and I'm going to connect the two little guys together click back on default and how we get to that state is dead nice and simple right now we want to go from island run to our death animation and then we want it to go to the dead state so I'm going to drag off from here and I'm going to create or add another state call this dead and then I'm just going to drag this over to be a little bit neater and the double click on that we want dead is our animation even it's not even though it's just a pose it's not really an animation but and then click back on default go back to this the transition to be able to get to this from our death animation is we need to go ahead and type in time remaining ratio death one right there and my dyslexia had fun with this earlier <laughs> we want to drag off from here say float is less than and we'll put point one and then connect this into here essentially what this says is there is less than a tenth of a second remaining on this animation is how we can then go into that other animation and then we're going to drag from dead back to idle run and all we have to do is double click on this drag in dead so we're going to get dead in this case we're going to get undead drag off from here type in not and we want the not boolean and then just connect this so we're not dead so now we can go back to what we were doing so let's compile and save and that's it for the animation blueprint for setting up death now we're probably gonna make some changes to this later to look at um, ensuring that it works with replication for a multiplayer but let's get it working first and then we'll replicate it so we've got our health check and I'm gonna go ahead and grab all that and hit C and health check and change the color to our red we're done with the health check system now death what do we do when we die 
Well, the first thing we need to do is get a reference to our character movement. And we need to stop moving. Now, we're going to end up tweaking this around later, but this will get us started because we need to also ensure that the player is actually on the ground. Um, that could be a problem. If you're in the air jumping, we want to force the character back down to the ground and, and then go through all this. So we're going to deactivate the character movement. That's the number one thing. And then we're going to set a delay of five seconds. So we can just set up a respawn timer system. And then from there, we want to set is dead to false. So this is going to take us out of the death sequence and put us back into being alive again. And then, all we should have to do then is reactivate our character movement. Um, uh, we also need to Uh, we activate but since we're dead our health is now zero so what we need to do is we also need to set our health and we need to set it back to our max health easy okay so how do we test this how do we die um, we got a health check, so um, we need to figure out how to die. So we're going to right click and create a new event, and this is going to be called Any Damage. Event Any Damage. Okay. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to calculate if we receive any damage. We're going to get a reference to our health. And then what we want to do is drag off from the health, hit the minus key, so we can do float minus float. And we want to connect this to the damage there. So what we're doing here is we're subtracting the damage from our health. We already have a health check, so we can't go below zero. If we do go below zero, we're just dead. So that's the first thing, is subtract our health you know the damage from our health and then what we need to do is we need to set our health to this new value and okay now that we have a way of taking damage we know our health is set to 100 I'm gonna go ahead and create just a temporary key binding and we can use keyboard G and just a random key on it this will get deleted but what we're going to do here is we are going to apply damage so that we can just kill ourselves and test the, uh, the animation out. First thing we need to do is damaged actor needs to be get a reference to self. Just type in self. And the base damage is going to be a thousand, whatever. So in theory, now. If we go in and play our map, let's get rid of our player peg, and play on our map, and as we're walking around, I hit G. The one thing I didn't do, you see our health went to zero, and we'll wait five seconds, and it respawns, but we didn't tell it to go to our respawn location. So in our death sequence, we need to get a reference to our respawn transform. Because our map is telling us where our root or our default location is going to be, this should already be set when we hit begin. We hit play and go into it. So what we're going to have to do now is just um, set actor location and rotation. And let's go ahead and connect that. And let's go ahead and break this transform. I like breaking stuff. Break transform. And there we can get our location and our rotation. Technically, all we need is location, but this will allow you to set the rotation so you you can say you, you want your player to face a certain direction. So that should complete our death sequence. 
So as we're running around, all of a sudden, bang, we get killed. We do our death animation, we go to our death pose. Five seconds later, we go to there. And this is our actual respawn location. So I'm actually going to make sure I'm not in that location whenever I do it. So even if I'm in one of the rooms, it won't matter. I'm in a room and all of a sudden, bang, I get killed by a zombie and I'm dead. And there, this is my default spawn location, so I came back to right here. So that's that. That is our health system. That is our death system, our animation for dying, uh, whether or not it works in replication or not. That's So this is the first 25 minutes. It all works. It's great. Now, this is where we, we decide whether or not it works with replication or not. So first 25 minutes, great. That'll get you dying. This will work for anybody's project, especially if it's single player. So let's actually see if it works in replication. So I'm going to click the arrow here, come down, select 2 here, and new editor window. And this is where it's going to be weird because I have to sit there. Normally I have um, one off to the left. Server will be on the, the left monitor and the um, client will be on the main screen or whatever. So it's a little bit awkward. And each time I do this, in testing, I'm going to have to resize these windows. I can set the default for these windows, but then whenever I'm actually working and I'm not streaming, then it's going to be a little bit awkward. So here's the server. Let's stand in a location where the client can see. So I'm going to hit G and die. Okay, that's fine. We can see everything working. And there we go. So now let's walk around as the client come over here let's get where the host the server can see it and let's hit G and absolutely nothing happens I mean nothing nothing happens I don't lose health so this is where we're gonna have to, to work on our replication stuff so I can't inflict damage on myself so I'm actually the client right now so, Ah, so there's where the fun begins. So the first 25 minutes gets you there and working if you're doing single player with a really good smooth death sequence and everything else. So this right here, um, we're going to take this and we're going to drag it out of the way. We know it's working fine for handling damage. Um, this, we might need to go ahead and address that first. And let's actually do that before we get crazy with, with anything else. Um, let's actually start with this. So what I want to do here is, instead of just going directly into this, uh, let's drag this off. Actually, no, let's leave this here and just move with this guy. Let's create a custom event. And I guess we can call this take damage. And let's start it as run on the server. And let's link that into here. So now if we press G, let's go ahead and compile and save. And from here, take damage. That's the first step. Um, with that, so we're going to take damage and that is a run on server event and now when we press G it's going to go to here which then automatically goes to here and tells it to be run on server. I don't know if I need to multicast it but we'll try it as run on server. And we're going to hit play and do the same crap. I don't have to get crazy on making it look awesome. I just want both of them on the screen. So we can see what's going on. So the client and the server. Okay, the client is here. I am the, the, the actual server, excuse me. I am the server and I'm going to die. No problem. I just died. And then I respawned. So, cool. Now, the big question is, now I am the 
the client and the client sees the animation start for death and the respawn so the client sees it okay and the respawn is okay but the actual death portion is not so we know this works so we don't actually need to, to modify this anymore um, but we probably need to go ahead and put that in no this is just causing the damage that seemed to work. We'll, we'll come back to that if we need to. And this, we can just shove it off to the side because we know now it's working for causing us damage. And that's fine. So, death. We need to take a look at the death sequence. I'm going to go ahead and grab it and I'm just going to move it over here, give us some room to work with so we're not distracted. So, custom event death sequence and let's go ahead and replicate that run on server and let's break that link and we're going to take this and put this here so now whenever we run all this stuff for the death sequence sorry it will bug me if it is not lined up just perfectly. Um, so now we run death. We can then run our death sequence. It seems so counterintuitive because this is just doing the same thing as that. Why can't I just um, replicate this and let it run? Well, you know what? Let's make sure it works and worry about asking questions later. So again, I am going to resize my windows just so we can see. And we know that the, the server works. But server, bang, dies, responds, no problem. Okay, client. I am now the client hopping around and being a, a schmuckaroo. Now, I die, and the server still does not see it. I respawn, but... Wait, let's go back to the server. Um, server dies. And respawns there. The client comes over here, dies, and it works on his screen. <coughs> but respawns right there at its same location. So, one thing, respawn transform. Let's go ahead and replicate that. So that we know that that's where our respawn location is actually going to be. That should take care of that problem. But... What is the other problem now? To sit here and break down each problem as they come up. What part is not working and when is it not working? So, server dies and, well, he's standing almost in the respawn location. But, yeah, so server dies. See, server, um, and whenever server dies, the client did not see the server die this time. I'm sorry, that is the client, excuse me. This is the server. So now the server dies, and I didn't see it. Um, comes back to the right respawn location. So now server dies. Everything is working just fine on the server side. So we'll run back over here and put him here. Now the client. When the client dies, 
The server does not see the animation happen. And it responds right back where it started from instead of going to the default respawn location. So, respawn transform. Let's look at the map blueprints. And just for giggles, let's set that to replicated as well. I'm not worried about changing. Client dies and responds where he, he was. So yep. Client is actually not responding at the correct location and the animation is not working. So we're going to have to break down this problem and we've got that. So the, the respawn transform is going to be getting its information from here which gets it from the map. So that shouldn't be a problem but it is. Respawn transform defaults to just wherever you know, zero, zero, 0 location but it wasn't even doing that. So just for argument's sake, even though it says self, I'm going to get a reference to self. Compile and save. So the death sequence is run on server. Let's try it as a multicast. Compile and save and run it one more time. So, server on the left, client on the right. So, server, we're going to come over here and we're going to die. Health goes to zero, we teleport, we teleport to there, and our health goes back to full. So let's take a look over here and let's go to the client and set over here next to Dum Dum Red. And now we're going to die. The server still isn't seeing the animation start. And it's teleporting to the default location. It's actually not getting, it should be where the server is standing. Get out of the way, Red. So instead of it being right here, it's it, this is the 00110 location but this is not the actual transform that the map is saying for us to use. So, we'll have to address that separately. Because respawn, respawn transform is replicated, but it's not carrying over for some reason. The sequence. Okay. So, is dead is replicated. We know that. Um, let's actually look at the animation blueprint. And it shouldn't have to do this in here. But it looks like I'm going to have to. So, dead. Let's go ahead and replicate that. Compile and save. And it gets annoying whenever I'm streaming to have to keep resizing the windows just so you guys can see appropriately what's going on here. So you can see, you know, by doing this on the live stream, whenever I screw up, pfft, you see it. Call it a screw up or it's just not working or whatever else. You know what? Not working is not working. So here's the server. He's going to be over here and he's going to die. Client sees the server die, no problem. And he responds to the correct location. So now, client, we're going to come over here and the server can see it. So he's standing over here. We should respawn exactly where the, the server is located. So as soon as I die, the server doesn't see it. Son of a bitch. And we're at 0, 0, 0110. We're not at the correct location. But the whole point is, go away, Red. 
is the server is not seeing us die. So we got to fix that. Red, go away. One of the next things I want to do is create a method of killing red, a punch animation or something. So these two are replicated. So what's saying that it's not working? Okay, well, let's um let's investigate that problem. We'll we'll, we'll try to solve that. Death is running death sequence. Death sequence, we've tried it as multicast and as run on server, and neither one of them work. Um, respawn location, that's supposed to work. I have no idea why it's not working. Um, Alright, so we know that the server's good. So I'm just going to move this to the side a little bit and we're going to grab the client and that's the only one that really matters right now is the client right here we still don't see the client doing the death animation and it's the animation portion so screw it let's try adding a custom event here and death see uh, stuff whatever I don't care um, and we'll try this as run on server and let's break that and break that and actually run it here instead so we're going to cast to the player we're going to get that and then we're going to set that and then compile save and then from right here let's try running that um, yeah I don't know if I should have to do that or not this is new territory for me. I don't do a lot of multiplayer uh, replication. So here's the client. Server is still not seeing it. But, you know, it still works on the client, but the server is not seeing the death and still not going to the right damn location. So, server is working naturally just fine. and it's going to the correct spawn location so client again the server does not see the client die salmon on beach alright so we'll fiddle fart with this around we're already 15 minutes into troubleshooting and breaking all this down here um, I don't know why it's not it's using the default spawn transform but it's not getting the spawn transform from the level blueprints for the client so hell <laughs> let's try breaking this one down um, custom event set transform and cabal save now let's break this and we're just gonna move that up there and move this in its location and let's go ahead and run on server um, might have to multicast the um, in the animation blueprint we'll try that next So we'll run set transform from here. And screw it. Let's try that. Then in here, in this, we have it set as run on server. Let's set it to multicast. Um, 
compile and save. Okay, client. Let's run over here. And this is roughly in our respawn location. So we just want to see if it moves a little bit. Server still not seeing the animation. And it's going to the zero 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 and it's not going to the correct location still. So the server doesn't see the client die. And it's not responding to the correct location. But the server still continues to work just fine, so we haven't broken it completely. Alright. So that didn't matter if we ran it as that. The only other thing we can try is setting it to reliable. And let's go over here as the client and die. And that's still not working. Still going to the wrong location. And he was standing in the, that location whenever I spawned there. And it's like I spawned underneath him. Where we die. And this is the client right here. So whenever you die, you should actually be spawning right here. Because if we sit here with our client and go back to the server and the server dies and respawns, it'll come up right there behind the client. See? So everything else is working except for the frickin' respawn location, which I will come back to that. Um, I shouldn't have to add all this into the animation blueprint. So I'm actually going to delete it and hook this back into here because both of those are actually replicated and that should be fine. I don't think I even need to, to set that as replicated. That shouldn't matter at all. So animation blueprint should be fine. It's setting this. Setting is dead. And that's where we're going to have our problem is doing that. Alright, so everything else seems to be working just fine, um, except for telling it to start the animation. And we have it set to replicate, and this death sequence here is actually multicast and reliable. Hell, I mean, uh, we'll even check that, see if that works. Call an editor. Um, it's, there's just one little thing that's just keeping us from doing this correctly. The server just does not see the animation. Whenever they teleport, albeit to the wrong location, the server sees that, but just does not see that death animation. So, I will look up the solution for this one, and this is one of those things where I don't know everything, so and I'm just kind of making this shit up as I go along anyway. The hell system I know how to do. I've done it a hundred times. But, so the first 25 minutes of this video is the useful information. These last few minutes are just going to be nonsense because I'm not making anything work. So I'll, I'll come back once I've got that replicated correctly. And, and this also may be an issue with um, stuff being broken with 4.20. That's very well possible. Um, and for giggles... We know our health is replicated. We know is dead is replicated. Our respawn location is replicated. I'm going to go ahead and just for giggles, I'm going to go ahead and replicate the minimum health and maximum health. It should not matter at all, but why not? Because I think it's just breaking at this point. I may have to isolate the is dead portion from the death sequence and run that separately so that I can tell the server that I am dead and 
to begin that animation sequence. So I think that's where it is, and I'm going to experiment with it, and I'll do another um, stream later, and I'll include that fix, and I'll go ahead and do the the beginning portions of creating either a, um, a method of attack, whether it's a melee attack or a uh, ranged attack. So I'll figure that out. In the next video, we're going to do some damage instead of just taking damage. And that'll include doing damage to other players, if possible, and then also doing damage to um, the AI characters, so we can kill some bots at least. Might even throw in some um, animations for zombies, so we'll see. Um, I will resolve this situation, and I will show the fix in the next video, and we'll continue on from there. Alright guys, I'm going to take a break, walk away, and then I'll fix this problem. We'll see you soon.